So I've been working on an app that uses your phone's camera to identify and track pieces of brass as it moves through your reloading press. So right off the bat, you're gonna get a disclaimer that just lets you know that the app is not a replacement for a competent person. Don't treat it as such. Cool. Little update on where we're at in the development process and then right to the detection. So you'll see right off the bat that we do have bounding boxes that are kinda jumping back and forth here. It's got three things that it's detected. Uh, empty cases, a misloaded case, or a misplaced bullet, and a completely loaded case. I'm going to start just by saying I am not an app developer. I do not do any of the, I, I don't know any of this. This has just been a cobbled together project, uh, a lot of stack overflow, a little bit of Reddit, maybe some chat GPT in there. Um, it is, if someone that actually knew what they were doing looked at this, like, behind the curtains, they would probably just vomit on the spot. Uh, but anyways, it is working, so nana na boo boo But it is rough around the edges still. So the main purpose you'll see is that we have this vertical red line right here, and that's what we call the reference line. Anything to the left of that line is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be counted when it is a completed round. So if it has that green box around it and it goes left of the line, it's gonna get counted. Uh, there is a two second cooldown timer just to make sure that the same piece isn't counted multiple times uh, as it progresses off the edge of the screen, essentially. You know, it's, it's gonna, that line is set up right on the, uh, right at the end of the fifth stage of your press. And so as it moves through and goes down the chute, uh, we don't want it to get counted multiple times as it's going down the chute, because this is looking at it frame by frame by frame. And so, you know, one, two, three, that's what we're, that's the two second thing. One of the things that you'll notice is that sometimes we've got, two colored bounding boxes on the same image. And I think there's two reasons for that. The first is that these empty brass cases, it has been trained on many more pictures of those than it has either of these two. That's kind of how I started the project. It was just tracking the brass case as it went through. And then recently I've added these two. And so you'll see like on this error one, it's got a, it looks very similar to a empty brass case. You can see a little, uh, the two little empty pockets you know, uh, just to the side of the, the bullet. And it's looking at it thinking, yeah, oh, that's a brass case. And it is, it is a brass case. So it's not wrong. It just hasn't fully understood what a misloaded piece looks like. Um, you'll see sometimes that it's got two bounding boxes like it does right there, where it's saying, hey, I think this is an error, but it's also, I think it's a piece of case. Or you'll see over here, this one might be, green with red behind it and it might say hey this looks like a loaded thing but i also think it might be misloaded and it should be showing the dominant color on top so it's think of it like layers and the greens on that's that's what it's most confident about and then as you progress um, to the other layers that's the the kind of the back of the second choice or the third choice and, and um, you'll see that this one right here is a loaded piece it's everything is perfect about it but we're not always getting the green box and that's primarily because this isn't the environment that it has been trained on i think i'm at about 14 1500 images that have been taken uploaded annotated and then put into the training model and none of them have been sitting on a wooden workbench like this you'll see that when we actually get over to the press it does a better job uh, and that's just the environment it's been trained on it's never seen it sitting on wood it's always seen it sitting on a, a you know a five seat die plate or it's got the blue from the press around it um, and so those are some of the the quirks that we're getting just because it's such a limited set and I thought hey maybe I'll come over here and train it on this but this isn't it doesn't need to know aside from me doing this little demo video I don't want it trained to know what a piece of brass looks like sitting on a table that's not the intention of the app so um, I guess with that being said let's jump over there and see what it uh, see what it looks like working all right, so right off the bat, you can see that we've got the reference line right here to the left of this piece. We want it as close to the left edge without counting it as possible. And so if you were gonna be reloading normally, what I would do is put a completed round there in the fifth stage and then set the phone to it, remove the round, and then go on loading like normal. And that way you can set it to get as close as possible. And we do that because if you put your line right here, it wouldn't give us as much of a area to detect the round as it passes. So remember, it has to be a green box and it has to go to the left of the line in order to be counted. If we 
have the line right here, that only gives us this area to detect and count it. And spoiler alert, it's not going to happen. The second thing you might be noticing is that every now and then we're getting a red box behind the green box. And that's because, like I said earlier, we're still at a pretty limited data set on what it's been trained on, especially for the completed and the error grounds. And so it's saying, hey, that bullet looks a little bit off center. And that's because when I first started this, I was trying to walk a really fine line with, if that bullet isn't perfectly vertical, I want it to be an error. And I've since learned that, that it, it's just, uh, that's unrealistic for this point in the project. So uh, I've kind of transitioned back to, that's what we're trying to detect as an error, something that has fallen over. You know, if it's just barely off something even like that, that's probably going to go up into the die and be fine. So uh, let's run through a couple and see what happens. And the biggest thing that we're running into is the speed at which it will detect right here. So you'll see we've detected them all so far, but I'm also not going very fast. If you give it a little pause almost, it'll catch it. But let's kind of, let's fly through this one and see what happens. Yeah, see, it did not get that one. But, I mean, it's also maybe faster than we need to go. Oh uh, no, look, one fell over. Let's see, I don't know if it's actually gonna be working. Yeah, since I have it, it's, my phone's paired to the computer to stream and record everything, so it's not gonna give the sound, but normally you'd be getting an audible town right now anytime it had detected something that is an error. So then you can just reach in there, fix it. It's happy with it now. Make sure that primer was in. And yeah, so anyways, I think it is a good proof of concept. Um, you know, the core functionality works. There's still a lot of bugs to hammer out. And like I said, I'm, I'm learning this as I go. So it's probably going to be a long, slow process. But um, it's, I think it's, it's, it's come a long way. Uh, this is actually the second video I've done. Um, I did this about a week and a half ago, but there's been so many changes made since then because of the delay in getting uh, Google to let us publish it. So um, made a bunch of changes, came back, and I think this is finally probably where I'm gonna leave it until we get it into the hands of some people. Uh, yeah, so I don't really know how to get feedback when the app crashes or when something causes an error. So it's really just gonna be feedback from users as you guys are testing it and saying, hey, this isn't happening or this is happening. Um, you know, I'm sure with different model phones, different devices, there's going to be a pretty um, widespread set of issues. I, I don't I don't really know what to expect. Um, is there an iPhone version? No. Will there? Not unless we find an iPhone guy that knows how to do iPhone stuff. Two things that we need to work on. The first being collecting more images to put into the data set to train the model to be better. Um, it's, there's, there's no way around, it just needs far more images. It needs to look at a different press with a different setup on a different lighting, with a different background, a different press color, different, you know, all that stuff is gonna make a difference in training this model to be something that can go from user to user to user and just work. Right now, it's trained just on that thing behind me. So, you know, the first couple of people that test this, it might not recognize things nearly as well if they don't have, you know, the, the lighting, uh, the little LED lighting inside, or if their background isn't a computer screen, it, you know, there's gonna be challenges just with that. So uh, getting people to, you know, take a couple of videos and some pictures and uh, to send those to us and so that we, we can train the model on a more robust data set that will, ultimately be a crucial step in making this a better uh, product. The second thing is 
figuring out how to improve the, I don't want to say refresh rate because that's not what's happening, but the rate at which it detects images. So you're seeing the, the, bound, the, you know, the bounding boxes on the screen and that's actually the last step in the process. And a step before that, the, the app is sitting there saying, hey, there's the piece of brass. And then it's telling the next function, hey, draw a square around it. So it actually knows where the piece of brass is before the bounding box goes on it. And I found that a couple times, you know, this isn't really staying consistently green long enough, but if I would just go boom, boom, and go back real quick, it would count it, um, which told me that even without the box being there, it still knows it's a completed round. Um, so anyways, long story short, there's got to be some way in speeding up the app, optimizing it, uh, getting rid of unnecessary stuff or a better workflow. Like I said, I'm sure if someone that actually knew what they were doing were to look at it, uh, to look at the code and see how things were structured and, and working, they would probably not like it. Um, but that's part of the process. So, um, yeah. So yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get it uh, out to you guys soon. And um, hopefully there's a couple of you that want to try it and test it and, and report some feedback. Um, there'll be a link in the description on where it is once it's up there. And then there's also a link on how to get in touch with me if you're willing or want to be, um, want to be a part of contributing, collecting some more data, collecting some images. Um, you know, obviously we can use all the help we can get there. So uh, definitely reach out and, uh, yeah, cool. Thanks, guys.